Hello class, this is Mr. Mormon. Welcome to video three in our genetics series. Today I'm going to talk about uh, everything that's involved in our paper pet project. Now I call it the paper pet project, but in the book it's called All in the Family. The basic idea of this project is that we are each going to be making a paper pet and we are going to choose the traits of our paper pet and figure out what the genes are that they would have had to give them those traits. We will then breed our paper pets as a way to study how traits are passed from generation to generation. We'll breed the paper pets and make six offspring. Um, by looking at the traits of the offspring, we will be able to, to learn a little bit about how traits are passed from one generation to the next. In the end, we'll make a poster that shows our whole paper pet family and um, uh, the probabilities of getting uh, the different kinds of offspring. Now here's the grading rubric for the project. You can see that there's three basic components I'll be looking for. The creation of your uh, parent paper pet, how well you determine the traits of the offspring, and your presentation of the paper pet family at the end. So the first step is to use the making a paper pet worksheet and choose the traits that you want your paper pet to have. Looking at this chart, you can choose blue or yellow for the color of your paper pet. Gender, obviously male or female. Eyes can be square or round. Nose, triangular or oval. And teeth can be square or pointed. Now, you can get as creative as you want and add any other characteristics to your paper pet. If you want to give it crazy hair or crazy ears or freckles or anything like that, I don't care. But for these five traits, um, you have to choose from this chart. Okay, um, so choose choose your traits, and you're going to fill them in here where it says phenotype. So color, you'll choose blue or yellow, gender, male or female. So choose the traits you want and write them under phenotype, because remember, phenotype is what the organism looks like. Once you choose all the traits that you want your paper pet to have and filled in the phenotype, go get either the yellow or blue paper that you need. You'll glue this back onto the paper and then cut out the shape uh, for the paper pet. The next problem is figuring out the genotype. Oh, don't forget to give your pet a name as well. Um, we then have to figure out the genotype. What genes would your pet have to give the phenotypes that you pick? This chart can help you figure out what alleles your paper pet is going to have to give it the traits that you chose. Now what I did was I highlighted the dominant traits. Blue is dominant over yellow. Round eyes is dominant over square. Triangle is the dominant nose. And pointed is the dominant teeth. That's what it says in the text of the worksheet. So um, what that tells me is that a yellow paper pet has to be little b, little b. That's the only way you can be yellow because yellow is recessive. For blue, you could be purebred blue, big B, big B, or you could be hybrid blue, big B, little b. Now, I may, I'll make a suggestion here that for any of the dominant traits that you choose, the highlighted ones, I would choose hybrid instead of purebred. That'll give you more variation in your offspring. If you pick purebred blue, big B, big B, all of the babies are going to come out blue because that parent will always give a big B. And since big B, the blue is dominant, all the babies will come out blue. If you choose um, hybrid, then there's a chance of getting some uh, yellow babies because the hybrid will have both uh, the blue and yellow allele. Now, male and female, there is no dominant or recessive. Males have uh, an X and a Y chromosome. Females have two X chromosomes. By the way, that's the same way that it is in humans as well. One is not dominant over the other. So you can now fill in the genotype of your paper pet uh, on the, the back of the paper pet cart. Okay, so at this point, you have the phenotype filled in with all the traits and the genotype, the genes that gave those traits. The next thing is to draw the face on the paper pet with the characteristics that you chose. Um, you can decorate it at this time as well. The next step is to breed the paper pets. If you're working by yourself, you're going to need two adult paper pets. Um, if you're working with a partner, uh, you should have planned ahead of time who has the me the male and who has the female, um, and we're going to make uh, we're going to breed them and make six offspring. 
On the back of the Making Paper Pet Offspring paper, I created a breeding worksheet, okay? And what you need is these My Pet Genes cards. And you will take the data from the back of your paper pet and record it onto the gene card, um, the phenotype. And then the genotype you're going to split between heads and tails. You'll make one card for dad and one card for mom. Put them at the top of the breeding worksheet. And then you're going to need coins, one coin for, for the mom and one coin for the dad. And you're going to flip to see which alleles they give to the baby. So what you're going to do is flip the coin, flip a coin to see what allele mom gives. Okay, that looks like a heads and what allele dad gives. Um, so I got two heads. So that's little b from mom and a big B from dad. So I always write the dominant allele first. So I got big B, little b from the flips. And that tells me that this first baby is going to be blue. Okay, for the next baby here, I flipped again. And I got heads for mom and tails for dad. So that's little b, little b. That's going to be a yellow baby. Continue flipping for all of the paper pets until you've determined um, what genes they got from the parents. You're going to do the same thing for each one of the traits. And remember, each one of these traits assorts independently. So you have to flip for each and every trait. Just because we got uh, big B, little b for the color of this first one, that doesn't mean that that's what you're going to get for gender and eyes and nose. You have to flip to see what they get from mom, what they get from dad. That's the same way that it works in real life. There's a random chance of what allele you get from mom and what allele you get from dad. Once you've filled in um, all of the phenotypes and genotypes of the babies, you can come up with names for them, and you can get the little uh, blue and yellow cards that you need um, to, uh, to glue. The, the, these are going to be the backs of each one of the babies. So cut them all out, glue them to you know, the proper color blue or yellow card, draw all their faces, and um, decorate them the way that you want. The final step is to put it all together in a poster. Uh, both parents will be attached and all six babies. Um, attach them with a string or yarn, uh, either with tape or a staple, so that I can flip each of the paper pets over. Do not glue or tape them directly onto the poster. Uh, I need to be able to turn them over to check their genes to see if you did the genetics right. Um, the last thing that you need to do is make five Punnett squares, one Punnett square for each of the traits so that you can show me what was the probability of getting blue and yellow, what was the probability of male and female, what was the probability for the different kinds of eyes, nose, and teeth. Make sure you put the, your name and your partner's name on the back and hand it in. Okay, I think that's a pretty good overview of this project. If you have any questions, of course, ask me in class.